Hey everybody! This is Mary, your GTAC Guru, and I'm here once again for another edition of G Suite Tips. For today, we are going to talk about Google Drawings. So recently, I just posted a photo of myself that was vectorized, and people asked me, Hey, how did you do that? And what tool did you use to do it? I said, well, Google Drawings. And most people reacted and said, hmm, I didn't know Google Drawings could do that. So I said, hmm, maybe I should just create a tutorial for Google Drawings because Google Drawings is actually one of my most favorite applications in G Suite. So let's get on to it. Google Drawing, just go to drawings.google.com or you can go to your Google Drive and in your Google Drive, just go to the new button. Click on the new button and then click on more and then click on that little carrot there and you'll be able to see Google Drawings to start your Google Drawings. So these are the two ways that you can create your Google Drawings. Another way to create it is if you are in a current document, let's say I'm in a document right now and I would like to create a drawing, I can actually insert a drawing and I can either create new or I can pull up an existing drawing from Google Drive. If I create new, it will pull up a Google Drawing interface. So I'm going to go to my Google Drawings interface right now and this is what you should see. Um, when you look at your Google Drawings, basically you are given uh, a canvas and this canvas is transparent. That's one of the nice things about Google Drawings is that the canvas starts out as transparent. That means that if you put anything in this um, canvas, what happens is you can actually um, export that into a PNG file. So if you click on file, you can see here that there are many download options for you. The image can be downloaded as a PDF, as a JPEG file, or as a PNG file, or if you would like to preserve all of the layers that you put in, then you can download it as an SVG. Note that if you download it as a JPEG file, it will uh, automatically compress it and if it was transparent to begin with, it's going to be white when you uh, export it to JPEG. So let's get on to creating an image. What are the things that you can actually do in Google Drawings? So the first one is you do have um, an insert button here. And insert, you can insert an image directly from the web or you can upload uh, from your computer right and or you can just get it from your google drive from your google photos or even um by clicking on camera and then taking a photo of yourself and putting that into your document for now we can just go ahead and search the web so if i'm going to search the web let's say i'm going to search the web for um for a, a fox So let's say I would I would like to just get this picture right here and of course if you've been using Google Docs before you know that this is actually going to pull up a Google search image search right there next to your Google drawings or right next to your application and the nice thing about it is all of the applications that all of the images sorry that you see here are all available for reuse with modification so you can either just drag that over or you can click on the insert that you can find at the bottom right hand corner. So it will now create that image of the fox. Okay. Note that if you would like to resize this window, you can always resize this. So I know that this same functionality is something that you can find in your Google Slides, but the difference is that when you're doing it in Google Drawings, you can change the size of your uh, canvas quite easily. So you can just go ahead and do that or you can uh, you can make it like that and then I would like to center it or I can even um, make it fill the page similar to that. Now, what you can do with the image now is that you can uh, format the image and recolor it as you want. So if you would like to recolor it and make it say grayscale or you would like to make it into um, a sepia colored uh, fox, you can definitely do that. If you would like to adjust that as well, you can um, you can adjust this by maybe changing the transparency of the fox. And if you would like to put some text, there's always a text box right here where you can put some text. And let's say I would like to put in that the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Over the lazy dog and 
um, and I would like to change the font of this one. So in the same way that you're using Google Docs, you can see that this bar here expands based on what you're doing. So when you look at the quick prompt box jumped over the lazy dog and you have Arial there, you can change it to a different font. And these fonts are available to you for, you for your use. The thing is, sometimes some of the fonts that you want are not here. It may be a limited list. So what you want to do is to go to more fonts. And when you click on more fonts, it would give you a lot more fonts for you to choose from. Let's say, what if I want to use Montserrat or Leto or Roboto? I can just go ahead and just click on that. And these are the lists of all of the fonts available to you in, in Google Drawings and also Google Docs. And this is the list of all of the fonts that I can currently use that I've already chosen. So let's say I've chosen all of that. And now you can find that these fonts that you chose are all now available in your um, list. So there it is. And I would like to change that into a bigger font, let's say 30. Right, so you can just put that there. Note that you also have the ability to insert some word art, some diagrams that you can also find in, um, in Google Slides, as well as charts from your Google Sheets. So there are many things that you can do in your Google Drawings that are similar to your Google Slides. But one of the things that I really, really like about this is that the background is transparent. So when I export this, it's actually going to show up as a transparent file. And I can insert this transparent file onto any document or any slide that I choose. Now, I can also insert uh, different shapes. And shapes are one of my most favorites because I can actually insert different types of shapes. Let's say I want, I want to insert a circle. I can just draw a circle. Note that when I draw a circle, I can change the circle's um, look to make it look like an oblong or an oval. And if you, but if you want a perfect circle, you need to make sure that when you click on the shape, and you click on circle, right? That you hold the shift button, the shift key before you draw your circle. And that would ensure that your circle is a perfect circle. Okay, and now that you've drawn it, you can now basically change the different um, colors of this one. So you can fill it with the different colors that you, that you want. So you can fill it with whatever color that you would like, as well as, um, put in some text inside so this is a circle and even apply all of the fonts that you've already chosen so let's say i chose my cherry cream soda and making it a little bigger there so you can basically do this um which is similar to what you can probably see in your uh google slides and the difference again is that the transparency of your background so I saw, you saw a while ago that I was able to vectorize an image and I would like to show you how I actually did that. Vectorizing an image, let me just move, over, move this over quick and just delete that. Vectorizing an image is as simple as looking at shapes inside an image and then copying them and tracing them. And what you use for vectorizing is something called a polyline. So you can select a line here and click on polyline. So when you click on polyline, you can then be able to click on the sides of the image and then trace them so in this case i'm going to trace the fox i'm going to trace it by just clicking on the different edges of this fox you know it doesn't have to be perfect you're gonna have to kind of go slow sometimes because in my case I, I, i'm not using a mouse it's better for you to use a mouse for this sort of jobs and i don't um have a mouse right now i'm just using my trackpad to um to create the the tracing so i'm gonna trace this uh fox right now and once i've finished tracing it what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna trace like the whole outer corner or outer sides of my fox and then i'm gonna fill in the details later on I'm, i might i might not be able to do this all in one go for this tutorial because like i said earlier sometimes it takes a little bit of time to make these things so now that i filled in and trace the outer edges of the fox what i do now is i click on select and i now move this to the side so it now becomes part of my drawing and what i normally do is i check the general color of the fox so let's say here 
maybe we can just go back to format options and then remove the coloring so that there's no recolor it would be great for us to actually see the real color of the fox i usually use an eyedropper or a color picker so use your favorite color picker on your extensions and then just pick the color that you want so in this case i might want to pick the lightest color so in this case i'm going to pick the white or i can pick the brown okay so let me just pick the brown and that brown color is now added and copied and i'm going to copy the hex code of that brown color so that when i click on my trace right here i can change the color of the filling so that i can put in the brown that i just copied so this is the brown that i copied this is the hex code and i'm going to make the lines transparent so that i don't have to worry about that there and now what else do you do you now start to trace using the polyline tool again you now start to trace the different shapes that you can find inside the fox for example you can find that the fox itself has this kind of black shape so what you do is you find these blocks of color and these blocks of color are what you're going to be um, tracing like one by one that's what i normally do i would um, trace them whatever the color is and sometimes i would trace them based on color i don't move them to the other side right away for example the nose is also black so i'm also going to trace that and there might be times when you will need to zoom in onto the image because uh, it might be too small for you so i'm going to trace in the filling for the ears right there you go so now what i'm going to do so i'm going to choose all of these uh things by clicking on control um let me just remove that clicking on select again and then selecting all of these objects by clicking on control select control and click and then moving them onto the other side okay note that when you move them to the other side you're just gonna have to uh, make sure that you're moving them in the right place sometimes you might need a little bit of adjustment right but once you've moved them you can now change the fill color say to this color i'm gonna probably change it to um to black there you go so the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm going to just trace over some of the white of this fox And like I said earlier, sometimes it takes a little bit of trial and error to do that. And I know that some people who actually do this for a living, you know, um, knowing that knowing how to vectorize is a really useful skill, but it's also really time consuming. Like, I didn't know how to do this in Photoshop. I still don't know how to do it in Photoshop. But in Google Drawings, it kind of makes it easy and fun. So you just kind of trace all of these white stuff here. And when you're tracing it, just make sure that you get all of it. And once you do that, just select again, put it back again in here, put it under the nose. There you go. And then just make sure that it's this dirty, um, dirty gray and transparent. So you can see that the form of the fox is starting to, um, it's starting to form on the other side. And this is basically how you do it. So let me show you what I did with that um, vectorized image. This is the image that I that I was um, doing and this is the image that I copied from. And as you can see, I only just really copied the shapes and I did exactly the same uh, thing that I was doing with this fox, right? So yeah, go ahead and uh, play around with this tool because there are so many things that you can do with Google Drawings and once you're done, all you have to do is to click on file and click on download and export that as a PNG and you'll be done. Now, if you would like to change the size, if you have a particular size of an image that you'd like to use, click on file and click on page setup and you can then put in the size that you want. So you can put in the custom size here, put in the number of inches or pixels that you would like to put for your drawing. 
All right. I hope you learned something new today on Google Drawings. And I'll see you again next time for another G Suite Tips tutorial. So if you would like to see more of these uh, tutorials in the future, you might like to follow us on facebook.com slash gtechguruph. We're also on Instagram slash gtech.guru, which are found in the description box below. Or you can hit subscribe and click on the notification bell so that you can be notified for new videos in the future. I'll see you again next time. Bye!